Well, hello friends. Welcome back to Browser Hacking. Today, we are gonna take a look at improving the randomness of the JavaScript heap in our browser. So one of the main weaknesses of this browser um, in terms of security is that the JavaScript heap is laid out um, sequentially and uh, that's not super great for security. So let's take a look at um, the process memory layout here. So we can see that all of the shared libraries are uh, randomized. So we do ASLR for uh, shared libraries, but when it comes to um, stuff like font and uh, malloc memory, and also the libjs garbage collector heap, um, all of that stuff is laid out uh, in sequentially. So you can see here that the addresses are just um, laid out one after the other. And um, this makes the engine very vulnerable to um, a lot of simple attacks. And you can, you can trivially use heap spray to um, put memory into predictable locations because of this. So uh, today we are going to make this a bit more difficult. So we're going to uh, randomize the location of these GC heap blocks so that um, so that um, an attacker has much less ability to predict what's where um, when they are running JavaScript in our engine. So uh, basically, what we want to do is mess with the heap uh, allocator in the JavaScript engine. So the way uh, we allocate garbage collector memory in libjs is that uh, everything is um, divided into cells. So we have um, blocks of memory, each block, each heap block is uh, 16 kilobytes. And then um, th those are the ones you see here. And each heap block is divided into cells. And the cell size is what you see here between the parentheses. So this is a 16 kilobyte heap block divided into 128 byte cells. And basically, uh, whenever something in the JavaScript engine wants to allocate a piece of memory for an object, uh, it calls heap allocate cell, and it provides the size of cell that it wants. And then what we do is, um, well, we may do a garbage collection if it's been long enough since our last garbage collection. Uh, but um, after that, we will find a suitable allocator for the cell size and then ask the allocator to allocate a cell for us. And an allocator is um, a per cell size uh, object that just manages the heap blocks that um, have cells of that specific size. So once we find our allocator, we ask it for a cell and then it goes and checks, do I have a usable block that I can allocate out of? If not, we have to create a new usable block. Um, so blocks are not usable if they are completely occupied. And of course, a garbage collection might um, discover that Actually, we were not using all of that memory, but at this point, um, we just have to trust the information that we have. That's just the nature of garbage collected languages. So uh, we don't have a usable block. We have to create one. So we call heap block, create with cell size. And this is where um, we actually go and ask the operating system for memory. So you can see that we are creating this name that you ended up seeing in the region dump here, libjs colon heap block. Uh, and then the cell size, and then we call a map. So this doesn't highlight correctly here for some reason. Um, that's just because I didn't configure C line super correctly yet. I'm still still learning the IDE. Um, so essentially, what we're going to do here is we are simply going to pass um, map randomized to uh, a map, and that uh, will cause the kernel to put this memory allocation at a random address instead of just uh, this sequential uh, address that we normally get from mmap. And this will come at the cost of fragmentation. Uh, and it may be a little too aggressive, but I would, I would much rather uh, do something too aggressive now and then scale it back once we uh, figure out just how much, how, how much aggressive it is, or <laughs> how too aggressive it is, um, how overly aggressive it is. 
Um, that's just how I like to do these things. Like I, I like to tighten and harden first and then um, poke holes where we need them instead of um, instead of the other way around. So if we just run the browser, uh, then that doesn't work. Okay, so <laughs> let's figure out what happened. Um, presumably we crashed somewhere. Uh, um, web content crashed. Um, hmm? Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. I think um, when I implemented map randomized, I feel like I didn't implement the alignment thing. And this thing definitely wants block size alignment. So um, that's probably the issue because um, so our heat blocks are 16 kilobytes each, and they're also allocated on a 16 kilobyte aligned address. So that's a special request we make to the kernel. Um, and the purpose of this is that if we know that the heat block is always on a 16k aligned address, then if we have a pointer into a heat block, we can just um, zero out the bottom bits, and that gives us a pointer to the heat block itself. So uh, it's very, very convenient in, in many places, and, and we use that technique a lot to go from uh, any garbage collector, garbage collected object to um, the heat block that it resides in. So um, let's go and look at our MMAP implementation. So what do we do with map randomized? It's here, okay. And we call space page directory range allocator allocate randomized, sure. And we pass in the alignment. But we don't actually use the alignment unless we do the fallback. Okay, so in case you didn't see the video where I implemented um, shared library ASLR, so the way this works is that you call mmap with map randomized as a flag, and then we will make 1,000 attempts to uh, just place the memory at some random location. Um, and if we can't find a, a hole big enough in that time, then um, we fall back to allocate anywhere and allocate anywhere is the uh, first fit allocator that we normally use for for VM um, so as I've noted here there, there's probably a smarter way to do this but this works for now so I think basically what we want to do here is simply um, do we have some way to align this like round up to power of two um, I guess we can just round it up like that. Yeah, so essentially we get a random address and we mask off the bottom bits so that it's page aligned. And then actually we don't need to do that. We can just take the random address, round it up to a power of two so we can even write it this way. There we go. Okay, so we get a random address, round it up to the alignment, and then um, we check if the address is within the range of this range allocator. And if so, we see if we can allocate it so that it doesn't overlap with some existing uh, piece of virtual memory already. And if that works out, then we return the allocation. Okay, so that sounds good. So I think I think that should do the trick. Um, so let's do a browser. <laughs> That's not the browser. Um, here's the browser. Pit of web content. Of course, web content is our secondary process that runs the web engine because. Um, a while back I switched it so that now the browser is a separate process from the web engine and um, just that 
additional isolation is, is very nice. So now we have our, where are they? <laughs> Here. Here is a libjs heap block at some location. The next heap block is much later in the address space. So these are now at random locations. It's very, very cool. So if you want to go and spray stuff, then uh, you'll find that um, it doesn't, it might not end up where you think it will end up. So that is very, very good. And of course, our malloc chunk blocks are still here at predictable locations. And it's something that we should probably address as well. Um, but today I'm just going to do the JavaScript ones. Um, and yeah, like I was saying, I think this is probably too aggressive in terms of fragmentation, especially on a 32-bit architecture like we're currently on. Um, once we once we have a 64-bit um, address space, then this would be a smaller concern, but right now we're on 32-bit, so um, fragmentation is a concern here. Even so, uh, I think it's better to uh, just suck it up at this point and uh, take the fragmentation hit, take the performance hit, take the page table bloat, and um, and then we can figure out how to scale this back or consolidate and coalesce some of these uh, at a later point. But right now, I'm okay with this. So let's let's do it. So first, we commit the kernel change. So kernel range allocator or um, map randomized honor alignment requests. Previously, the uh, alignment uh, would only, we only cared about the alignment on the fallback path. Yeah, and then Um, randomize GZ heap block locations. Um, this may very well be, this um, may very well be too aggressive uh, in terms of fragmentation, but um, we can uh, figure out, and, 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 and we can figure out ways to scale that back once it becomes a big problem. Um, for now, this makes um, the GC heap uh, a lot more, a lot less predictable um, for an attack. Attacker. Yeah. So let's see. Um, allocate GC heap blocks with a map map randomized uh, for the MSLR. Okay. So that's really nifty. So this would definitely have made my recent browser exploit harder. Um, because yeah, I was I was using I was spraying these number objects um, on the GC heap, and it was very predictable where they would end up. So I think uh, I think this is a very good thing. And let's see if the <laughs> JavaScript test suite still runs. Seems to run just fine, and that's good. And let's go browsing the web a little bit. See that things don't fall apart. Uh, need to do some work on on um, performance in the browser at some point, but I think I um, think this looks pretty good. Web content and yeah, so now we have heat blocks just everywhere. That's what we like to see. Yep, 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 yep. Very annoyingly placed. 
perfect. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so this is gonna be the video for today. Um, and I just wanted to uh, throw yet another wrench into the gears of um, attackers, um, which also includes my future self, who will eventually <laughs> try to break through all of this stuff. But um, yeah, very fun with all this stuff. Um, it's like uh, we, we keep doing more mitigations and there's just a lot more that need to be done. Um, and randomization is definitely not like the be all end all of, of heap security, obviously. Like there's a lot more stuff we need to do with the metadata on the heap and stuff like that. And of course, malloc is a separate story, but uh, I think this was a, a good little thing to do today. So thank you very much for checking out the video. I hope that you saw something interesting. And if you have some ideas or suggestions on good uh, techniques we can employ, then um, please let me know. I'm, I'm very interested in all forms of uh, hardening and mitigation. Um, and yeah, thanks for, for stopping by and uh, I guess I'll see you next time. Bye.